join us as we explore episode five of El Basico con Sabor. Mm, flavor. In this episode, we are going to be exploring dynamics within your eight count basic. I'm Tina, and this is Arjun, and we are with the game of Argentine Tango. And our key word, our concept for this is contrasts, differences. In the same way that music has contrasts, you can have high energy, loud, soft, quiet, even pauses in the music. We want to demonstrate to you some ideas for how to put contrasts into your dancing that will make it more interesting and make it connect with the music better. And we're going to explore all these concepts within the simple eight count basic that most of us are taught right at the very beginning. So that way we're all starting off on the same playing page. But just to make sure, let's go ahead and review that eight count basic to get us all together. And then we will start looking at how you can take that simple basic and expand it with flavor. Beginning with step one, back against line of dance. So we generally take that small. We don't want to run into somebody behind us. Two to the side. Three, an outside position. Four, five, as our partner crosses. Then four, the resolution. Six, seven, eight. So changing this basic up from something that's very standard, something that we dance all the time, can be as simple as taking a look at the size of the steps that we are doing and that is very closely tied to the speed of the step as well. One of the most easily recognized differences in music is the speed, how fast it's playing. And we generally dance in three different speeds. We've got our normal simple time where we dance on every other beat, the strong beats, one, three, five, seven. Or half time, where we're only dancing on the first strong beat of each measure. So we're going half as fast. And the logical third one is double time, yep. where we're hitting each uh, beat or note in the measure. One, two, three, four. So we're going to demonstrate the eight count basic in those three different timings. So we can start to take a look at what does it take to make dancing on each of those timings comfortable how do we communicate it with our partner, et cetera. Right. So starting off with our baseline, we have our simple time, which as you remember is dancing on each heavy beat. One, three, five, seven. <laughs> stepping on each of those down beats. This is great for your marching, your kind of very steady type of music. Then we have our half time. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you wanted to say anything about that. <laughs> and what we're going to see is that the temp, the speed relates to the size of our steps. When we have more time, we can take a larger step. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's take a look at what it looks like on our half time speed. <laughs> with a half time, there are some opportunities in there to create some drama, to make your movements kind of ooze and be very intentional. Um, and a lot of times we use this during our lyrical times, but it can be used during times of high drama. Uh, anytime you need to slow down your progression um, on the floor, if the couple in front of you in La Ronda has slowed down. Right. <laughs> 
Okay, so moving on to our faster, smaller, more rhythmical option, we have our double time. Let's take a look at how that eight count basic looks in double time. <laughs> See, the double time can be a little frenetic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so you might not use it in a whole basic sequence like that, but you'll find that there are portions of the music where it's hitting rapidly and you want to respond to those notes that are running at you. Yes, absolutely. And to do that successfully, we've got to change the size of our step. It's got to be smaller steps to be able to get that in, and also we've got to use a little more tone or energy in our movement to control the size of those steps and the speed of the steps. Mm -hmm. We like to think of either the energy as being contained within the couple for fast rhythmical movements, or that it is flowing out and around the couple for those slow kind of oozy movements. So the way that you think about how you are holding your energy as well as how you are communicating your energy to your partner can go a long way to making those changes and dynamics comfortable and clearly communicated uh, to your partner. So now that you've seen that you can dance the eight count basic in all three timings, what we would like to uh, challenge you to do is to explore what parts of the eight count basic lend themselves well to different timings? And then you be can begin incorporating highs and lows all within the same eight count basic. Right. So we have size, we have speed, which are besties. They uh, oftentimes go hand in hand. We can also play with the height that we are at mm -hmm. during this. And that also relates to the size and speed because if we're taking a uh, long step, that's generally going to bring us down towards the floor. If we're doing uh, short steps, we're typically up. Up, up, up. Yes. So a lot of times the level that we dance at tends to be the level that we're at all the time. And that might be a very nice level for us. But anytime we are doing anything the same way all the time, it can be great, but it starts to get boring. It, the, the mind starts to wander, the eye starts to wander, the people that are watching you, it just doesn't look as interesting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we may not have the space to take a very long step, but we can still express those other qualities. So if we're at a really crowded Milonga, we've got people on all sides of us, we may only be able to take that small step, but we can still express it with it elevation and the uh, speed and the relative size. So I could be doing quick steps almost right directly underneath us or we could be doing long, long steps by within simply, our shoulders. By simply the way that we arrive onto that new step, yes. So exploring the range of possibilities for our height. If we dance everything like normal, that's kind of ground zero. We can sink below ground zero and dance things a lot lower and typically slower than we would. That looks like this. As you are dancing low, your collection becomes very important because that's what brings everything back under the axis and makes it look elegant as opposed to squatting. And that's true of both partners, clearly. Then we have the opposite end of the scale. A lot of times you will see this kind of up and lively look in Milonga. A lot of times we are dancing on that double time in Milonga, we're dancing on every single beat. It's light, it's up, but we can infuse our tango with some of those elements as well, not just keep it in the arena of Milonga. So when we are dancing to our higher elevation, if we will, And a lot of times we 
find that repetitions are a nice thing to add to your higher elevation. It feels already kind of light and joyful. And so to repeat something a couple of times is uh, fun. Yeah, that high so good. Yes. So using your side steps on step two, and then over here at step seven, we can uh, take that elevation a little higher and kind of repeat that sideways movement, which is really fun, rhythmical. The cruzada actually is another great place. You can go into the cruzada, and, and one of the uh, adornos that I really like is a repeating kind of cruzada, almost ballet-like on point uh, motion but by repeating and going high with that elevation kind of gives that little dee -dee 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 look that we can oftentimes accent a repeating motion that is going on in the music. Uh, one partner can be doing that while the other one's doing a, a different time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. So we encourage you to look once again, dance your entire basic in these different height elevations Find your baseline, go lower than that, go higher than that, and then also look for places within the basic that lend themselves well to changing up the height and the texture of your eight-count basic. There's one final thing we might describe. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> different instruments produce sound in a different way. The violin has a slow rise in the, in the volume of the sound and then how long it stays at that volume, how quickly it drops off. A drum beat hits very fast. We can re show that in our dancing by controlling how we use our light leg mm -hmm. in terms of the collection. Mm -hmm. That can change the look of the basic, just simply that motion a lot. So again, if we have our baseline, if you will, that would be a normal collection in between uh, your steps. A lot of times if you're dancing on simple time, that collection can happen on those even beats. It gives you time to do that. Right. And, or we can collect slowly, again, adding that drama to the step. So let's take a look at how this basic changes when we just simply delay what our trailing leg or our light leg is doing purposefully with intention. Let's look at the opposite because sometimes the music comes to a rip, an abrupt <laughs> halt and it's it's somewhat challenging to represent that that uh, closure of the sound well with the light leg we can do that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're hoping that after this, the end of this video, you will recognize that again, just because you might know just a few simple patterns does not mean that you're not capable of dancing musically, dancing with texture, dancing well connected to not only the music, but to your partner, as well as the couples on the Rhonda. That is just as important as all the other elements as well. I would say more important. <laughs> I, I mean, it's fun to learn all yes. those figures and say, oh, I can do this, this, and this. But when it really comes down to it, that feeling of connection with a partner and we're both listening to the same music and interpreting it for each other, that's, that's, what we're that's after. nice. Yes, that's what we're after. The last challenge that we would like to leave you with in changing up the dynamics of your eight count basic is we talk a lot about dancing to the music. What is the music doing? Is it lyrical? Is it rhythmical? 
One thing that we would like to challenge you to do is to dance opposite. The opposite. Sometimes you have the different musical instruments doing things. Sometimes they're in harmony, they're working together. Sometimes there's a con counterpoint to what's going on. As dancers, we're part of the music and we can do a counterpart too. We might hear the, uh, the strong beats, but choose to dance on the off beats, the soft beats. Mm -hmm. Or let's say we have a nice, strong, driving bass line, but you've got this violin that is just hanging and floating up above. You can choose to dance to either one of those, and oftentimes picking the less obvious choice is interesting to watch, interesting to connect with as a dancer, and it's one of those pleasant surprises that we like to talk about. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about how to break out of your pattern-based Argentine tango, learn how to be more musical and more creative, we encourage you to join us at the Game of Argentine Tango. These types of the concepts is are exactly what we explore in our online course. That's gameoftango.com. You can sign up for a seven day free trial. We'll even send you a personalized practice planner to help you make your solo work more productive. We look forward to seeing you on the dance floor. Abrazos.